Good morning, HPC. Uh, welcome to Good Friday. Hope that I'll be able to see at least some of you uh, at one of our services today. And welcome also to day 39 of 40 Days of Faith. Who'd have thought we would have made it? If you've, um, if you've been here for everyone, you deserve a medal. I was very struck by this um, from Trip in this morning's reading. The message of the gospel is devastatingly humbling. It tells me that I am in a hopeless, impossible and irreversible state apart from divine intervention. Even Adam and Eve could not make it on their own. Even though they were perfect people living in a perfect world and in a perfect relationship with God, they did not have the ability to go it alone. That's very striking. I'm not a perfect person. I don't live in a perfect world and my relationship with the Lord is, apart from his mercy, not perfect. Therefore, why am I so confident that I can manage on my own? Why am I so slow to cast myself on the Lord and on his mercy? I don't know. That was just something that struck me. Uh, I'm, I wonder what it was that struck you most from, from that reading. He points us to John chapter 6, verses uh, 60 and 65. Uh, just a few thoughts on that. Um, the disciples uh, and those who follow Jesus complain that what Jesus has just said is a hard saying. Uh, and part of the reason why I think it's, they think it's a hard saying is because they misunderstand what Jesus is going on about. They, they take what he's saying literally. Uh, so he says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood... Well, that can't be intended literally, can it? <laughs> because no one ever did that. As Jesus has done frequently in John's Gospel, he's speaking about physical realities to teach us about spiritual truth. So here, the idea of eating Jesus's flesh has the spiritual meaning of trusting or believing in him especially in his death for the, for the sins of all those who would follow him. So let me just flick back to verse 35 of the same chapter. And here you'll see Jesus speaking about coming to him as satisfying hunger or believing in him as satisfying thirst. He's mixing up his metaphors, the physical and the spiritual, isn't he? Similarly, to drink his blood means to trust in his atoning death, which is represented by his shedding of his blood on the cross. Now, Jesus isn't here speaking specifically about the Lord's Supper, although, of course, there are parallel themes, because the receiving of eternal life by being united with the Son of Man is what is represented in the, the taking of the, the bread and the wine, where Jesus's followers, we're told from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, do symbolically by faith eat his flesh and drink his blood. And verse 63, flesh, the, the human nature, the human emotions, the human will is incapable of producing genuine spiritual life. Uh, that can only be done by the Spirit. But the Spirit works powerfully in and through the words that Jesus speaks. And those words are spirit and life in the sense that they work in the unseen spiritual realm and they awaken genuine spiritual life. Uh, verse 46, Jesus' divine omniscience is shown, isn't it, by the fact that he knows the state of everyone's hearts and therefore he even knows those who were not believing in him. Uh, he also knew the future and that who it would be who would betray him. And it just shows us, doesn't it, that his incredible, um, his incredible power, I suppose, and his incredible foreknowledge. Let me pray for us. Oh, Father, feed us through the cross, I pray today, as we particularly remember the reasons why this is a good day. I pray that uh, seeing all that Jesus did, has done for us on the cross would cause us to throw ourselves with complete confidence on his life and on his death for us. Amen. Thanks very much HPC. One more, one more tomorrow. Hope to see you then.